What do vinegar, blue cheese, sauerkraut, and wine have in common? They're all fermented, but they're not the same type of fermentation. Want to know more? Today I'm sharing with you five types of fermentation. Let's get started. Fermentation is one of those subjects that can be broken down into so many subcategories and take numerous rabbit trails. But rather than make a 10 part series of documentary length videos, I'm going to give you the quick overview in 10 minutes instead. Fermentation number one, lacto-fermentation. A genus strain of bacteria called lactobacillus are responsible for lacto-fermentation. The bacteria feed on the glucose in the carbohydrates and sugars naturally occurring in foods. They convert the glucose into lactic acid as a byproduct. It's the lactic acid which gives lactofermentation that distinct tangy to sour flavor. Some of the most commonly known lactofermented foods include sauerkraut, kimchi, and yogurt. These lactobacillus bacteria are frequently called probiotics the bacteria that are good for our digestive system. They are naturally occurring in the environment, including on vegetables and in the soil. While many harmful microorganisms typically cannot survive without oxygen, nor in a highly salty or acidic environment, lactobacillus can. They are salt and acid tolerant while also anaerobic, meaning they do not require oxygen. So how does this play into lactofermentation? Well, in the instance of fermenting vegetables, a salt water solution is used called brine. The vegetables are submerged under this brine, and as nature would have it, this is a perfect design since the combination of no oxygen and salt contribute to an inhospitable environment for harmful pathogens. While the lactobacillus are feeding and thriving in this environment, they are also generating lactic acid, which additionally acidifies the brine, again contributing to an inhospitable environment to harmful pathogens. Since lactobacillus naturally occur in vegetables, no starter culture is required, but if you choose to add one like whey, for instance, it can jumpstart the fermentation. Remember though, it's not required for vegetable ferments since the needed bacteria are already naturally present. A saltwater solution brine is not mandatory for other lactofermentation mediums, such as milks, seeds, and nuts used in making both dairy and non-dairy yogurts and kefirs. All that's needed to get a lactofermentation initiated with those mediums is a starter culture of lactobacillus strains. From there, you can lactoferment just about anything, including even water. On my channel, I do a lot of lactofermentation videos, including how to ferment water, and of course, the kingpin of lactoferments, homemade sauerkraut. All of my videos are of course beginner friendly. I'll leave links in the description below if you're interested in checking any of them out. Now before moving on to the next type of fermentation, I'd like to add a note that there are a small handful of lactic acid producing yeasts out there, as well as other bacteria species that can generate some lactic acid. However, lactobacillus is the largest genus within the group of lactic acid microorganisms and produce the greatest output of lactic acid during fermentation. Fermentation number two, alcohol fermentation. Yeasts are the microorganisms that ferment sugars into ethanol alcohol and carbon dioxide as byproducts. The alcohol element is what gives wine, beer, mead, and spirits their kick, and carbon dioxide is the gas that can be seen as bubbles during the fermentation process and later used to generate carbonation in a fermented beverage. Alcohol fermentation can be overly simple to quite complex. The naturally occurring yeasts are what cause the spontaneous alcohol fermentation of damaged fruits or overripe fruits and requires no human intervention. On the flip side, with human intervention, the science and art of making specialty alcohol beverages like beer and wine can be complex and precise. Now beer and wine making extends beyond the scope of this video, so I won't be going further down that road. Fermentation number three, acetofermentation. Vinegar is generated by a genus bacteria called acetobacter, hence acetofermentation. 
Acetobacter are responsible for creating vinegar. What type of vinegar that's produced depends on the medium used to start the process. For example, apple cider vinegar uses apples, wine vinegar uses grapes, rice vinegar uses rice, and so on. Here's how acetofermentation comes about. Vinegar making is a two-phase process of fermentation. Phase one is fermenting the medium, such as apples for example, into an alcohol ferment, aka hard cider. This is the same type of alcohol fermentation we just discussed, where yeast consume the sugar and convert it into alcohol. Once the alcohol fermentation has commenced, the yeast dies out due to having consumed the available sugar of the medium. Next comes phase two, acetofermentation. Acetobacter are naturally present in the air around us and are aerobic microorganisms, meaning they require oxygen. By exposing the commenced alcohol fermentation to the air, the acetobacter begin doing their job by consuming the alcohol and generating acetic acid as the byproduct. Acetic acid is the primary constituent of vinegar other than water, and it's the acetic acid that acidifies the vinegar gives the sour taste and generates flavors. The duration of the vinegar making process from phase one through phase two is about six to eight weeks. Fermentation number four, mold fermentation. In modern Western culture, mold is generally associated with food spoilage and is avoided. However, not all mold is bad. Mold cultures have been traditionally derived from the environment for many centuries around the globe by nearly all societies. In the West, the most familiar mold fermentations are cheeses. For example, the blue mold that gives name to blue cheese used in that well-known salad dressing. Asian cultures have many distinguishing mold ferments, such as Japanese koji, used to make sake, miso, soy sauce, and tempeh, are also created using mold fermentations. Molds of all kinds need oxygen, moisture, and warmth in order to grow. However, for the kinds of molds intended for fermentation processes, they need each of those environmental conditions in balanced and controlled proportions. Different environmental niches give rise to different molds and their characteristics, including flavor. Compared with other types of fermentation, mold has a reputation of being quite finicky. Fermentation number five, symbiotic fermentations. This isn't really a class of fermentation, however, I created this category since all of the above fermentation types we've covered aren't always isolated. Many types of fermented foods either rely on or coexist as a symbiotic relationship, and I'm using this category to illustrate the point. Other ways to describe a symbiotic fermentation is to say interdependent, collaborative, combining, coacting, or synergistic. Essentially, it's where one type of fermentation cannot happen unless another type happens first, or more than one type of fermentation is happening at the same time. Acetofermentation, as discussed earlier, is a classic example of a symbiotic fermentation. Since acetofermentation can't happen unless an alcohol fermentation happens first. Kombucha, soy sauce, and sourdough are other foods that have a symbiotic fermentation relationship, unique to themselves. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, fermentation can be divided into numerous subcategories and have many rabbit trails to travel. This video only scratches the surface, but hopefully it gives you a better understanding of the different types of fermentations. If you want to get your feet wet with vegetable ferments, aka lacto-fermentations like sauerkraut, kale, bell peppers, check out my full fermentation playlist that has lots of beginner-friendly lacto-fermentation videos. In my fermented hemp milk video, I use a special gadget that can help prove lacto-fermentation has occurred. Kind of fun to have that numeric evidence. And what's the difference between fermenting and pickling? I give the answer right here in this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.